All right, you YouTube mother truckers, let's get into today's review. We're talking about Rise of the Tomb Raider. Now, this game's pretty much the same as the last one. If you've played the last one, you'll know that basically this is Laura Croft, but younger. And this time, she's got a little bit more, uh, more groove under her belt. Like, you can see right away, last game only had one, uh, climbing pickaxe. This game, two. Two, baby! That's right, we're coming in twice as hard, so this is twice as good of a game. It's got twice the climbing and... Or at least twice as good of climbing mechanics. Now, the whole premise of this game, like I was about to say, like the last one is, Laura's kind of getting herself into shenanigans, doing some research, because she's like an archaeologist, just like Indiana Jones, because she's the woman Indiana Jones. She's always been the woman Indiana Jones. And then, uh, Nathan Drake was just the... The, the man, woman, Indiana Jones to eventually become like the next. He was basically Indiana Jones, but then they were like, well, we, we kind of want to be like Tomb Raider. And then they're like, but Tomb Raider was like Indiana Jones. So it's just like this whole universe. And then the Machine Games this year is going to be coming out with the game that's like Indiana Jones. Is it going to be like a first person Indiana Jones or is he going to play like Uncharted, which plays like Tomb Raider, which plays like uh, a game interpretation of Indiana Jones. God damn, the amount of traversal of archaeology just getting up to mischief in the world it's just driving me batshit insane absolutely losing my mind and right away this game i kind of knew though wh what i wanted out of it because like the whole game starts in the cold and i'm like wow they put more layers on laura croft now i don't appreciate that i like seeing laura croft wet and wild and then the game was like here's a flashback where laura croft is getting wet and wild and i'm like you're giving me shiny ass cheeks in the early parts of the game oh boy goody me and this is why this game series is will and always will be better than uncharted because i get to stare at laura croft's ass and i know that there's some losers out there who are like oh but she's such a downgrade from the old laura croft have you seen her ass cheeks and i love that they'll also use the pictures from this game in particular where she's wearing a goddamn like parka and they're like look how much they downgraded laura croft and i'm like bro you can literally play this game with her wearing a tank top in the alps i don't think that you, you guys are being so disingenuous like just play the game enjoy it stare at her ass be like wow this is a really hot game because i like laura croft and i think she's juicy but no you're like i remember when her boobs were triangles and those triangles were 14 times bigger than her current boobs it's like so what if i tried to grab those triangle boobs they'd make my hands bleed like, come on, guys. But anyways, uh, there is some things that this game does better. I think the combat in this game is, uh, it, the, the improvements they made in the last, from this last game to this game weren't drastic, right? The game, uh, opened up the little open world sections a little bit more than the last game did. It, the last game was more of, like, a proof of concept, and this game was like, all right, let's run with it. And then it, it really gave you, like, better combat mechanics, and the things were, everything was minor, but the changes were, felt good enough to where I was like, okay, I can feel what you did, I know what you did that's different I, i'm fucking vibing with it bro i, I i'm i'm um, ball shriveling, dick hard, clit slapping, understanding what you're fucking saying, dog. I'm there. The one thing I did kind of have a gripe with was kind of the crafting looting aspect. The last game I felt like the looting was a little more, more fun because it wasn't necessary, but it was like entertaining and it did help a little bit. But this game, it's like I'm constantly running around looking for shit because I have to. Well, well I want to upgrade my pistol. Well, I need to find like six uh squirrel uh penises and then i gotta find like four bird vaginas and then i have to find the like uh the the un uh fertilized eggs of an iguana to be able to like upgrade my rifle so it has a scope i don't want to do that shit what is this the fucking last of us i and it's not bad like don't get me wrong i understand crafting mechanics i get them i know a lot of people like them for me they always feel tedious Especially when it came to this era of game, it felt like everything and its mother were like, well, wouldn't it be cooler if we had to fucking craft things? And I'm like, not really, no. I I, I was having fun with the, with the game before, before you made me craft stuff. Like, I do think the shits were well implemented, but at the same time, I'm going to gripe about it because I gripe about it when it comes to The Last of Us. I've griped about it when it comes to other games. So when I came into this game expecting not to have to craft as much because the last game kind of led me on this false ideology that I was just going to explore and have fun and open crates and get pieces of guns and then make cooler guns. And then I get into this game and yeah, the pieces of guns thing and like finding cool stuff like that is still in this game. And that part, I did go out of my way to find those pieces 
pieces because I wanted to get the cool stuff, but when it came to the crafting, I just couldn't give less of a shit. It was just like, oh, I gotta do it. Oh, I gotta go run around and find fucking bird feathers. Oh, yay. And like I've said, I do love this game. I love it a lot. I, this is actually a, one of my favorite series. I haven't played the third game yet. This, I've only played one and two. I do love this series. But this game is very, very fucking similar to the first game. And that's not a bad thing. Don't get me wrong. But when it comes to making a YouTube video about it, this is probably going to be one of my shorter videos of late because it's the same shit as the first game. Oh, she goes in on a little adventure. Shit goes awry. Military group shows up. Oh, no. Now we're going to get into some fucking metaphysical fucking bullshit that goes up the, the street and like steals kittens i don't know it's the same oh well look look there we got the supernatural shit going on it's it's the same stuff and this game i did have to say did have some cool side quests though and that's what i thought was the real defining feature like one of the main ones is you you walk into this cave and all of a sudden you start seeing wacky shit you seeing your dad and this thing comes out and grabs you and you're like I was so engaged on this side quest that didn't even freaking matter. You can miss this thing completely. You can just plow through the game's campaign like you do in your sex life. Five minutes in and out, baby. I'm done. Because if you take it your little bit of time, decide to slow things down, open up the Kama Sutra, learn some different moves on how to slap the clit, this game will reward you with cool ass boss fights. Like, I fought a freaking house in this game. I go through creepy doors. I, like, really enjoyed this part. I wish the whole game was this. And the fact that it, it's kind of like a Scooby Doo rug pull, right? Where you're like, oh, well, it's all creepy. And then you find out that you can get, like, a, uh, a antidote that you're actually just tripping balls off of mushrooms. So if you take this antidote, you don't, like, lose your fucking collective marbles. You find out that this shit's all. All a, all a hoax. And that was cool to me. That was entertaining. And I was engaged trying to find the stuff to... Because the first part, you really just go through the creepy door and fight a house, right? And I, I didn't show a lot of this because I want you to experience. You can't, you can't fully understand how great this section was. By me showing you footage or even telling you, it's like actually diving into a pussy for the first time, right? You get in there, you feel all that work she's done from her fucking Kegel, or Kegels, and you're like, oh, she's grabbing the cock. And you're like, wow, this is pretty fucking nice. That's how that whole section was. I left that little opening teaser in there just to give you that, ooh, spooky vibes. Because, like, you need to experience it. That is something, that right there, that side quest that is missable, is worth playing this whole game for. I would, I would double down on that. I would try triple down on it. If I was, this was a hot dog eating contest, I would gobble me some glizzies just to prove the point, even though I don't really like hot dogs that much. They're okay. They're really good at mac and cheese, but spam's better. But the thing that mainly made me keep playing this game was I could tell the effort that was put in to really expand this experience from the first game, because they were like, okay, we, we haven't really done Tomb Raider before. How can we do this and make it our own? And they, they, they hit a little softball, a little safe pitch at the beginning. They, they were like, I'm not going to do any curves, no sliders. I'm not going to moon the fucking batter. I'm going to sit here. I'm going to play it safe. This next game, they really expanded what they were doing. They added in other characters. They uh, There's this whole faction in this world that's just been living here protecting the the thing uh protecting this fucking mountain or whatever or shrine wherever the thing that can grant you immortality is there's this whole group and you're actually um talking with the group they're helping you out you have this whole moral conundrum should i go after it it's my job as an archaeologist in my in my strive for history but it's also uh like was my dad's dream but at the same time by taking this i'm also being rude to the native people it's it's got some deeper tones and i like that and i also appreciate this series for it's not or its ability not to shy away from being a little bit brutal to be a little bit more gnarly than the regular uh, adventure game that it sits in this um this genre i mean this game sits up there with like the brutality of something like the last of us but it's not doing it with zombies these are people these are like non eat your brains people probably have families and like cousins and a grandma and you're just murdering them and that's cool it's based it's red pilled actually that no red pilled it's not red pilled the murder people that sounds wrong but this game's based i like this game i, I do like this whole series because like you feel the terror you when you go gray like this you're like oh shit i kind of messed up look like i played with my nipples too long because they're juicy yeah they're not as big as some people like but they're juicy enough and i'm i'm talking right now like if i was laura croft in the game wow i'm, I'm diving into the wall not even not, not breaking the fourth wall diving into it just like i'd like to dive into her just like those spikes i want to 
to impale her so hard. I want to get deep in there. Real deep, like, massage that inner lining. Ugh, gross. I got too far. I went a little bit too disgusting here. But... That's kind of what I wanted to do today was get a little gross, get a little jokey, kind of explore the the worlds of Laura Croft, Shadow Rise, or whatever the fuck this game is called. There's the, the names of these games were terrible. I'm gonna say that right away. It's like Tomb Raider. Cool, you're re, uh, you're rebooting the series, Rise of the Tomb Raider. What isn't Rising of the Tomb Raider kind of a reboot name already? And then it's like Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Wait, that's a reboot name. What the fuck are you doing? This is stupid. Why didn't you just go like Tomb Raider, Tomb Raider 2, Tomb Raider 3? Uh, you could have been like Tomb Raider 2, fucking Iceland, Tomb Raider 3, The Jungle. It could have been a lot more simple. It would have been way better that way. I don't know why they didn't do that. They should be paying me the money to make these names. They should be like, hey, King Jiffy Goats, what can you name this game? Laura Croft's Juicy Thigh Gap empowers women across the world. Number one. Number two, Laura Croft's got a nice ass empowering women to this day. You know, stuff like that. I could be in this zone. I don't know why they're not calling me. I mean, my phone's always open. I'm not going to release my phone number. That would be stupid. I'm just asking to get doxxed then. But at the same time, don't call me ever. You can comment on my video, though. Subscribe to my channel. I'd love that. Really come in. I'll do a ton more reviews like this. Probably recruiting all of them. I mean, that's what I do. I'm trying to bring a little bit of old YouTube back without being kicked off the platform. I want to be a little bit safe, but a little bit raunchy. That's that. That's the line I ride, baby. And I'll always be there. And if you feel like you didn't learn much about this game, I, I don't know what to tell you. I feel like I've gotten pretty deep into it. And if you if you can read between the sex jokes, just figure it out. Comment below if you didn't understand. Comment below if you did understand. Like my video, subscribe. Bye.